Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and oh, the Christmas presents keep coming. And I got you the ultimate gift. Absolutely fantastic news that will make your day and de-stress your life. Mark Rosewater quit. Just kidding, I wish. No, you read the headline. And this isn't wishful thinking, okay? Like, if you want to learn all the science behind it, I got, like, the 24-minute version where I kind of explain everything on my uh, EST channel. Link below if you want to watch that at any point while hearing this video or right now. Uh, go click on that instead. All right, so I did, like, eight hours of research on this, and uh, here's why COVID-19 is probably going to be completely gone in 2022. First up, I mean, we got the monoclonal antibodies. You guys know how they work. I don't really need to explain it. If somebody gets to them quick enough, a huge number of the viruses die within hours. And unfortunately, they're not synthetic antibodies because we are a hundred years from being able to make that. Basically, like an actual white blood cell in an incubator somewhere, they expose it to the virus. It flips over to be a T cell or whatever, produces antibodies, and then they like say, okay, stop right there. Let me clone you real quick. They clone the white blood cell, and then they're like, okay, now go. And all the clones just pump out antibodies, and the antibodies work on any strain that hasn't mutated yet. So that's why compared to 2019 and 2020, the death rate was so low while the infection rate was so high in 2021. Because people are getting treated in better and better and better ways. And that's, in my opinion, the number one best treatment as far as the numbers go. Now, I'm not giving out medical advice. I'm just saying, as far as the medical reports are saying, that's the number one thing that works the best. But Paxlovid was just approved by the FDA this month. It's in the Avir family, I guess you would say, uh, because it's like Molnipiravir. It works similarly. In fact, I just named the product name. The actual chemical name is something... Avir, meaning it's in the same family, works the same way. And honestly, I think the Avir is basically antiviral because that's what it is. It disrupts the virus's uh, um, ability to replicate, but unlike uh, Moldapiravir, it doesn't give you cancer. This version, Paxlovid, only targets an enzyme that makes the final proteins that are needed for the structure of the COVID viral cell. And because of that, it doesn't need any kind of certain spike proteins or a response to this and that. No, it'll kill every strain ever. And within reason, future ones. By within reason, I mean, if it were to mutate against this, it would not be the same virus. It would be a different virus entirely. This basically doesn't let it make proteins at all of any shape or any kind. Uh, the clinicals are done. The FDA approved it. I think it was like this week. And uh, Pfizer put up a billion dollars into production and distribution already. In just the tests, 89% uh, reduction in hospitalizations and deaths. And they only tested it amongst people who have not had COVID and also didn't have the vaccine. So the most vulnerable, most likely to die people. Yeah, I mean, this is basically the cure. If, if the viruses can't replicate, that's it. The number just stops. They're just like monoclonal antibodies, just because the virus has stopped doesn't mean your lungs aren't coated in hydrochloric acid and secondary infections and your ACE2 receptors are out of control in your nose and you caught pneumonia on top of it, okay? It's all about speed, but get this. The FDA approved the pill for oral use by prescription as soon as a positive test or an exposure, a confirmed exposure happens. I mean, why wait to hit the pause button on the virus replicating? Basically, if you're over 88 pounds and you're over 12, that's what the FDA says. And I mean, it it just cures it. It's that simple. This shit's going to be out in like January, guys. This is the best Christmas ever. I'm kind of riding that Christmas high because I didn't do crap on the 24th. Today we got Christmas with the other side of the family and we did the other side of the family's Christmas on uh, Thursday. So also I stayed up all night and had a Red Bull. Oh, and the reason for that, well, you probably saw my last video. Oh, you thought this is the end of the video? No, FFP2 masks were just invented and are being rolled out right now. In fact, I think they're already in production and in some parts of Europe, I heard they're already mandatory because they work so unbelievably well. When worn properly, the average just whatever medical style mask, assuming it was made correctly and assuming it's worn correctly, 26 to 76% effective. It's, it's all over the place. It definitely does something, but I mean, if masks stopped it, wouldn't it be stopped by now? But this mask is purpose-made, multi-layer with cotton, verified cotton, like actual, like we're going to count the size of the fibers and stuff, plus a some kind of like heat-blown polymer layer. And they stack those layers, and then it's like the M2 style that fits around your nose better. So this ain't no white and blue bullshit dental style thing where you just vaporize out your nose and, yeah, no, mm-mm. This shit actually works, proven in a lab. It took them obviously like over a year to make it, but 
FFP2 masks. Okay, from them and independent labs verifying this, and I say this because you're not going to believe me. Yes, I looked up three nonprofit sources on this. They provide a 94% exhaled aerosol reduction. And that's how this spreads is aerosols. So they're estimating that a 94% reduction results in a 0.1% infection rate. Or I guess you could flip that and say a 99.9% .9 reduction in infection chance, which that seems optimistic. And, and I'm sure it was in a lab while you're six feet away, while you don't have a beard, while you're wearing it perfectly. And it's been less than four hours. But yeah, this mask, like it's a mask that filters water vapor. That's what we needed. Here it is. What more can I say? If literally everyone wore these tomorrow, COVID would be gone. That's what the, the makers are estimating. Mix that with Paxlovid, mix that with monoclonal antibodies and tell me that you think COVID will still be around. So wow, what wonderful news. Leave a like and subscribe. No, I'm not done yet. Mm -mm. No, Santa's got more presents. The U.S. Army, that's right. Shout out to my bros in the Army. They just completed, I believe, phase two of the clinical trials of the SPFN vaccine. It is a 24-faced soccer ball-shaped molecule, which how the hell did they synthesize that? And every face can have a different spike protein. So this works currently on every single version of COVID plus every single version of SARS that has been widely circulated. And I think there's still some room on the 24 faces, actually. So if COVID mutates again, they'll either delete the oldest version of SARS or they'll just be like, I don't know, throw it on the other side of the molecule, whatever. So uh, clinicals are delayed because they got to find people who like never had COVID and then didn't get the vaccine or did have COVID but didn't get the vaccine or both or, you know, like every combination to make sure it's safe for everybody at every antibody level. But I mean, it looks good so far. It hasn't killed a chimpanzee yet, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and okay, I should throw this in at the end. Um, it, It's complicated. People have asked me this. I didn't want to speak on it, but uh, I almost died from the MMR vaccine when I was three. I'm still not anti-vax because I'm not an idiot. I had a fever. I was in the hospital. It was really bad, but I lived. And guess what? I didn't have mumps, rubella, or I don't know what the other M is. If it's memes, I do have a crippling meme addiction. So I guess that one didn't stick. It's probably the one I had the reaction to. I had a second horrible reaction to uh, the tetanus vaccine the second time I got it, which, okay, that actually makes sense logically. I'm not going to explain the science behind it, but you do tend to have an allergic reaction the second time you're exposed to things, not the first. But guess what I did right before I was going to go to Cuba? I went and got the hepatitis booster because I was over 10 years on it and I didn't have an allergic reaction the first two times. Because one, I'm not anti-vax because they work and they're the, one of the best inventions at all of mankind. And two, I'd rather have a slight allergic reaction that could be treated in America than catch hepatitis from the water in Cuba. And then the flight got canceled, but also the vaccine was fine. I felt fine. It's all about the numbers and science and risk and everything, okay? It's everybody make your own dang decision. Now that said, all I'm gonna say is I did not get any of the COVID vaccines. Mostly because my doctor said, are you crazy? After I told him I'm like allergic to some latex, silicone, wood dust, animals, mold, pollen, ragweed, everything, stupid people, working customer service, and that I've had two severe <laughs> reactions in the past to vaccines. He's like, don't you f***ing dare. But that's just me and I'm extremely unique and I have really weird medical issues. So that's why I'm presenting the new SPFN vaccine as a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing if they say, uh, get this or we're kicking you out of the military with no pay. That's a little much, especially when we have like everything else I mentioned that's almost single-handedly like an absolute roadblock for COVID. You add them all together, I don't see COVID lasting longer than 2022. I just don't. We're looking at like an 89 plus percent reduction with Paxlovid. We're looking at monoclonal antibodies being like the best treatment ever. I don't even know numbers behind it. Um, the FFP2 masks allegedly 99.9% .9 effective at preventing certain spreading conditions blocking 94 percent of aerosols then we've got this highly effective allegedly new vaccine that works better than all the other ones allegedly and protects you from other past sars variants going back to like 2001 i mean that's a lot of things with a lot of numbers and everybody knows that if you have like one 90 percent reduction and another 90 percent reduction you multiply them together you get a really really high reduction like I mean, you know what they were saying? The T factor or whatever of COVID, it's like really high. If I recall 80%, if anything stopped COVID 80%, that would be enough to stop it. These are all in theory above 89% or better individually. And they're all rolling out like starting almost January. Yeah, RIP COVID. I went way too into detail in this one, but if you still want like the full scientific, the studies, the quotes, the stats, if you're like that kind of geek, uh, link in the description, EST video on it. 
Or if you're just into cool prepper stuff. I don't usually cover news or biological, like, biochemistry statistics. In fact, in the last video, I just uh, lit some cotton balls on fire with petroleum jelly. It, it was actually shockingly effective. Oh, and then I almost got killed by a tent. So if you just want to go see that, emergency survival tips. It's the most, like, down-to-earth based educational prepper channel on the internet. Right there. Go check it out. Otherwise, everybody have a happy December 25th, also known as Christmas. If you celebrate something else, you know I'm throwing you in there too, but I'm saying what I celebrate, so respect that. And you say what you celebrate, and I'll respect that, and we're all cool, right? Okay? I say that because like 5% of my viewers are psychotic lefty SJWs who hate watch all my content because, you know, I said that like I have a reason. I have no idea. Get the f*** off my channel. And also, I'm going to be streaming like crazy, Arena, and maybe some other stuff uh, on this channel. Like crazy between Christmas and New Year's because all y'all like college on down are off of school during that period, probably, at least in America. Some of you guys might even be on vacation or off of work or just chilling at home or like whatever. So uh, since I stream like every two weeks, everybody's like, oh my God, after two years, I finally caught one of your streams. I thought I'll just try and do like one a day. So so I catch up with all everybody. So watch for that and maybe even temporary turn on uh, notifications on my channel. But on that cheery note, have a happy Christmas and I'll see you guys next time.